Hogwarts Legacy is a massive open world game, and this means that there's lots and lots of different secrets for you to discover. Some of these are small easter eggs where you just involve certain characters, speaking to certain people, or just seeing certain interactions, whereas others are actually full on tasks that you can complete in the game that you didn't know about, and some are just some facts about the game that you probably didn't know about either. So in this video, we'll be going over things you didn't know you could do in Hogwarts Legacy, and things that you just didn't know were in Hogwarts Legacy, and of course, general facts about Hogwarts Legacy that you probably didn't know. So yeah, today's video will be going over everything you didn't know about Hogwarts Legacy. So let's waste no more time and let's get straight into it. Hogwarts Legacy features a vast open world map, smashing all records of the breathtaking experience of action RPG. Meanwhile, many players are wondering about the accurate size and how to access the map. And when it does come to the size of the Hogwarts Legacy map, it is 2.95 square miles or 7.65 kilometers squared. This map is so massive that it runs all all the way from the Forbidden Forest to Hogsmeade, and that is just putting it into perspective on how big this map actually is. I mean, this map is huge, and especially at the beginning of the game, it's going to feel even bigger, since right at the start, you don't even have your own broom, so you're having to run from point A to point B, and if you've got a quest and you haven't got to the point where you've got a broom yet, and you're going through side quests, let's say you've got a quest that, you know, might be right on the other side of the map since you're doing some side quests, then it's going to take you quite a while to get over there if you've never been there before, since you can't fast travel, and of course, you have no sort of broom more mounts to be able to get over there. So yeah, this map, whilst it is great that it is massive right at the beginning of the game, it's going to hit hard that this map is massive since it's not going to be ideal getting from point A to point B. But yeah, no, the map is absolutely huge in Hogwarts Legacy. Now, of course, we do tend to see this all the time nowadays with RPGs and general action adventure games, but Hogwarts Legacy doesn't disappoint. It's not just a standard size map. This is a big map. So next up, we're going to go over secrets within Hogwarts or the Hogwarts Castle to be specific. First of all, we have the bridge and that one of the bridges in Hogwarts you'll find a puzzle and this puzzle is pretty in depth actually and you have to line up certain objects and certain icons in order to open a secret passage. This passage will reveal a totally new area and within this area where you will find a chest. You'll also find a legendary chest here so you're guaranteed some legendary gear by going into this secret area but yeah of course you do have to solve a puzzle to be able to get into it but with YouTube and everything these days it's pretty easy to find the answers to those puzzles and of course you can keep things ultra realistic and not look for any hints and you're going to be able to do that just by going through the game. So yeah, on one of the bridges in Hogwarts, you'll find yourself a secret passage that will take you into an area where you've got lots of chests you can loot. Some will give you some cool cosmetics and some will give you automatic legendary gear. Next up, we'll be talking about your good or bad actions. During Hogwarts Legacy, of course, you get the options for certain dialogue and selecting certain dialogue or completing certain tasks will result in you completing a good or bad action going through the sort of good or evil path within the game. Now, if you were to complete a bad action, for example, around a student or focusing on a specific student, then that student is going to remember that. Later on in the game, if you then encounter that student again, they're going to remember that and chances are they're going to bring it up and they're not going to like you very much. So yeah, if you get on the bad side of someone, then chances are if you talk to them again, they're not really going to want to talk to you and you might not be able to get a quest out of them or something like that. And yeah, they're not going to be very happy with you. However, of course, there is a twist to that. If you were to go on the other way and you were to be good to them and you were to be nice to them and choose good actions, then chances are you're going to be able to take them on quests with you and they will become one of your companions. But of course, that could change if you were then evil to them. So yeah, your actions have effects on your companions. You'll be able to make companions if you're nice to them and then you won't be able to, of course, if you aren't. Next up, we'll be going over the talents. There are five different talents that you are able to level up within Hogwarts Legacy. These being raw, stealth, core, dark arts and spells. These are all available to level up and progress through within the game. And this is something surprisingly a lot of people don't know about. I've seen a lot online where people don't really see this as a thing that you can progress through. So worth noting obviously that it is there. Of course if you're looking for things to do in the game or you're looking for ways to progress through the game or you're looking yeah you know for that sense of progression then this is one of those areas. You're able to level up all of these five different options. Arguably one of the coolest things to do in Hogwarts Legacy is to cast a spell. The Harry Potter series has become well known for its wide range of iconic magical moments. As such spells like Expelliarmus, Lumos, and Wingardium Leviosa
also have become quite popular within the franchise. So it is worth noting that throughout the game, you are able to collect spells and learn these spells. Now it is worth noting that most of these spells are locked behind certain quests or certain assignments. You may have to complete an assignment for a teacher and then you are able to learn the spell. Or alternatively, you may have to complete a certain quest and then the spell will unlock after you complete that quest. Which brings us on to the next point, is which there are three unforgivable curses within the game. This is something that a lot of people don't know about, so a lot of people just see the normal spells and they just think that that's it when it comes to magic really in Hogwarts Legacy, or at least magic that you're able to control with your character. But that isn't the case, there are three unforgivable spells within the game, and I have already done a video doing a complete guide to these, but I'll go over them briefly within this video. So yeah, if you're interested in watching the complete guide, then a link to that will be in the description below. While there are many different kinds of horrifying spells and curses in the Wizarding World, ultimately the general rule of thumb used is whether or not a witch or wizard uses the three unforgivable curses without restraint. These curses consist of Crucio, Imperio, and Avada Kedavra. You'll have the option to learn all three of these curses in Hogwarts Legacy by following the In the Shadow of side quest storyline. This quest features Sebastian Solo, a Slytherin student who means well but will stop at nothing to find a magical cure for his sister Anne, even if that means delving into the dark arts. Sebastian is opposed by his uncle, who has given up on any hope of finding a cure for Anne, and is firmly against anything to do with the dark arts. This quest also draws in Omnis Gaunt, a kind-hearted blind student in Slytherin who has a troubling family history that he's eager to forget about. Sebastian is also part of the main storyline in Hogwarts Legacy, but handling this series of side quests will provide the opportunity to learn all three unforgivable curses. The first two curses can be learned relatively close together, but you'll have to wait until the very near the end of the game before you can learn the third. So Crucio, which is the first unforgivable curse, deals high damage and curses the victim, making them more susceptible to other forms of damage in combat. Then there is Imperio, which curses an enemy and briefly places them under your control, meaning they'll fight against their former allies for a short while. Then there is the final spell, Avada Kedavra, which instantly kills the target. So those are the three unforgivable curses within Hogwarts Legacy, and not many people actually knew about those, so there you go. Those are the unforgivable curses, and yeah, you can go ahead and unlock them through the certain side quests that you will need, those all being through the In the Shadow of side quest, which involves Sebastian. So now we are on to the final thing you didn't know about in Hogwarts Legacy, and this is at the Hogsmeade Station. Here you can actually find the train. If you wait here long enough, first of all, you'll find loads of cool random encounters. It's definitely a place I recommend visiting. You'll find loads of characters interacting in certain ways. It's definitely a place worth visiting. But then you can also, at some point, find the train which will go past you, and I think that's pretty cool, and just something pretty cool there that Avalanche have added to the game. Yeah, something interesting that's definitely worth checking out, in my opinion, definitely something that you probably didn't know about. So that does just just about wrap up things here. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you are interested in watching that complete guide to the unforgivable curses in Hogwarts Legacy, then a link to that video is on the screen now, and you can go ahead and join me over there.